Hi there, this is S.J. Owens Science. I'm S.J. Owens and science is what I'm here to talk about. In particular, I'll probably be speaking of life science more than anything else, simply because I think that living things are some of the neatest things that scientists today get to learn about. I'll be covering material from a free online textbook called High School Biology. It's published by the CK12 Foundation and can be found online for free at wikibooks.org. Also, in the video description you'll find a link to download this entire presentation. In the notes section for each slide you'll find a link to the sources of all images used in that slide. So if you're interested in finding out where all of this is coming from you can take a look at that. I wonder what you think about life before watching this video. I personally find that living things are some of the most awesome and inspiring parts of the natural world. This might be because life is so diverse. The diversity of life is something that we all know about before even really thinking about it. There are many different living things. This isn't hard to prove to yourself. All you have to do is go outdoors and try to find a couple different kinds of trees. You can tell that they're different by different shapes of leaves or different branching patterns. It goes on and on. And there are many different types of insects, or small mammals. There are many different living things, so we say life is diverse. Things that grow are alive. We all know this intuitively because we all start out small. We remember a time in our own lifetimes when we were smaller than we are now. We grew and we gained features and abilities that we didn't have before. Anything that's alive is something that also grows. We people are alive, and many, but not all of the things around us are alive. Take for instance uh, a home, a, a building. This is not a living thing. However, the people that live inside of it are alive, and perhaps Many things that surround it, such as birds or trees and other things around it, are alive. Simply put, there are many parts of our world that are alive, and there are other parts of the world that are obviously not alive. We can see that there's a distinction. But what is life officially? Isn't there somebody at the top of some committee somewhere that has uh, finally made the statement, life is blank? turns out, uh, no, there is no consensus. For some reason, we haven't yet decided exactly what life is. There are many features of living things that are the same all over the place, and there are some features that are very different. Take for example this image. We see the example of an animal cell and a plant cell. Now whether or not you even know what a cell is at this point, you could probably tell that the cell of the animal is rather round and the cell of the plant is quite rectangular. For this reason, we couldn't say something like this. All living things have rectangular cells. We know this because animals have round cells, and they're not rectangular. We could also not say that all living things have round cells, because plant cells are rectangular. We could say something like this, however, and we'll find that it is true. That all life, all living things, have cells, simply. This is what we're looking for. What are the features, what are the characteristics of all living things? What can we say about life that is applicable everywhere? Some terms to know about life. What are the words that we need what tools should we have before we begin speaking about this? What is the language of the biologist? An organism is a living thing. If it's alive, it's an organism. The environment is a collection of the surrounding objects and events of a living thing. Whatever is happening around or is situated around an organism, that's the environment. So what do all organisms do? This is what we're looking for, a list of things that all organisms do. And in this video series, we'll be covering eight different features of all living things. The first of which is that all organisms respond to their environment. Let's show this with a simple experiment involving a rock and a pill bug. If we were to take a flashlight 
and shine it on the rock. Nothing would happen. It's not that the rock is shy or stubborn. It simply is incapable of doing anything at all. It cannot respond. It doesn't matter how much you shine the light on the rock, it'll just sit there forever. However, if we take the flashlight over to the pill bug and we shine the light on it, we'll find that the critter will crawl away. We introduced a light to the pill bug's environment. The pill bug typically prefers darkness. So the pill bug responded to its newly lit environment by seeking out darkness somewhere else. All living things are capable of responding to their environment, unlike non-living things which are incapable of responding to their environment, such as the rock, which could do nothing whenever we introduce the light to its environment. So we saw one example showing that all organisms respond to their environment. The rest of the items in this list include that all organisms grow and develop, reproduce and have offspring, have a complex chemistry, maintain homeostasis, are made of structures called cells, pass their traits onto their offspring, and change and evolve. We'll be talking about all of these things in future videos. That's all that we'll touch on for this video. In the next video, we'll look at how all organisms grow and develop, and how they all reproduce and have offspring. This is SJ Owen Science, and I hope that you check out some of the other videos. Thank you.